the SQL notebooks in Max Fabric. All you need to know about developing them in this video. Stay tuned. Welcome to the video, my name is Alex and on this channel I cover Max Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we're going to check out the SQL notebooks that enable better and more collaborative development experience for the SQL developers in Max Fabric. I give a brief introduction to TSQL for people who are wondering what is TSQL and how does it compare to Spark SQL that can be also used in Fabric. In a very brief nutshell, TSQL or Transact Structured Query Language is the Microsoft's extension or variant of SQL and it has been mainly used in Microsoft products like SQL Server and Azure SQL databases. In Max Fabric context, TSQL is mainly used with Data Warehouse as the main development language there. It can be also used to query Lakehouse's TSQL endpoint that is read only. On the other hand, Spark SQL is part of Apache Spark and is used for querying large scale distributed datasets. In the context of Microsoft Fabric, this language is mainly used to interact with Lakehouse's Spark API using notebooks and is one of the few supported programming languages there. Both of these SQL variants have their advantages and disadvantages, and also slight differences in their syntax. We're not going to compare these two languages in this video any further, since we're going to focus on TSQL notebooks. But if you'd like to see more in-depth comparison between them, leave some comments down below. But now let's open up Fabric and check out the SQL notebooks and what kind of cool things they allow you to do. Now I have a Fabric data warehouse open here and we can create a new TSQL notebook by selecting this arrow next to new SQL query and then clicking this new SQL query in notebook. And this will open up a new notebook with a TSQL as a language. Also, we can do the same thing by creating a notebook and then changing the language to TSQL here. But yeah, now we can start the TSQL development work. And since we are now using notebook for this TSQL development work, we can also create markdown cells here, which is pretty cool in my opinion, so we can document and comment our code a bit better using this experience. We can also attach data warehouses and lakehouses TSQL endpoints to this notebook and start query those. We have already attached one data warehouse to this notebook and that was the data warehouse that I used to create this notebook and that is then automatically attached to the notebook that you create. But to this notebook we can attach multiple data warehouses or lakehouses TSQL endpoints by clicking this plus warehouse button here. And from this list we can for example select one lakehouse TSQL endpoints. As it says here the type, is it SQL analytics endpoint or is it an actual warehouse? The difference is that these SQL analytics endpoints are read only, but with the warehouse we can use the entire TSQL experience when querying those. For now let's attach an SQL analytics endpoint to this notebook as well. Now we have attached two endpoints here. And now I can start query the objects like tables and views that I have in these endpoints. We can start from this movies table that I have here in my warehouse. And we can use these three dots to create this select top 100 rows query quite easily. And now the notebook automatically created this select top 100 query that is selecting top 100 rows from this movies table. And now we can run this and let's see what happens. And it is running and we should get the result quite soon. And here we can see the result. So in that table we only had three rows so we were not able to fetch 100 rows since the table didn't have 100 rows. And now we can query our lakehouse's TSQL endpoint in the same manner that we are querying our warehouse here. And let's go to our lakehouse endpoint here and let's find a table to query. And here we have this IMDB top 1000 and let's select top 100 rows from here. As we can see, we don't have that many options here because this endpoint is read only, so we cannot manipulate the data via this endpoint. And we would have to do that via Spark endpoint and using a regular notebook or some other tool. But we can select this top 100 rows from this table. And this will also create this query for us. And then we can run this and let's see what happens. And we were able to return the data here. And we can see that we have now way more data here since this table has way over 100 rows in it. 
Also a good thing to note that we have this three part object reference in this experience. So basically we have the endpoint, then we have the schema and then we have the object. And this convention allows us to do cross database queries that we're going to cover shortly. So let's add both of these queries that we just did to a single cell. And now let's run this and let's see what happens. As we can see, we can now only see the results for the first query that we had there. But actually we can see the result for the second query by using this tab here. And here we can select the result for the second query that we have there. So we can have multiple queries in one cell and then have them as tabs in our results. Also a cool feature to point out here that we can use these charts here and visually represent some columns in our data and do this kind of a quick analysis what's going on with our data to get a better idea what we're dealing with here. And we can actually customize the chart here and do a lot of cool stuff by using this feature. But you can explore this feature on your own more closely. Next I want to talk about these execution sessions and how does that happen in this notebook. Basically every cell it is its own session, meaning that we cannot reference things that we have declared in the previous cells in the cells after that, because they don't exist outside of that session. Let's try to clarify this session thing with a little example here. Here I'm just declaring one variable called var1 and having a value of abc for it. And then I'm selecting that var1. And by running this we should get a result of abc. So here we declare that variable and here we are using it as part of our query. And we can see the results of this select statement here. And now if we would like to refer that var1 in another cell and try to run this, it will throw an error because it cannot find that variable because it doesn't exist in the session that this cell is being executed. Also we cannot execute a cell piece by piece, meaning that if we would execute first this and run only the selected code and now we have declared that variable and then try to execute this select statement as a separate run here we would also get that error message. So because every time we do an execution it is its own session, this means that the variable is only available in that session and will disappear after that. This is a good thing to keep in mind when developing this notebook so you won't run into any funny situations when you have declared something in the previous cell and then try to reference in that in the later cell and then that's not available because now you know how these sessions work here. Next let's try to do some cross database or cross endpoint queries because it's also supported here. Here I'm querying those tables that I demoed already previously there that movies table and that top 1000 table. Those are in different endpoints as we can see from this three part reference here. So the first is in our data warehouse and the second one is in our lake house. And we can run this query and let's see what happens. And we can see that that query ran fine and we were able to fetch data from both of these endpoints using this same query here. Next I would like to show you a few more cool things about these TSQL notebooks. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Muxed Fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. With these TSQL notebooks we are also able to save our queries as tables. For that we need to highlight the section of the query that we want to save as table and then click this save as table button here. And this will then open up this save as table wizard here. And here we can select the schema and the table name for our table. Let's call this table as table one underscore test and let's save it to a DBO schema. And then we can click OK. And then it starts to create our new table there. And now it has already created that new table to that DBO schema. And now we can check out our DBO schema under our data warehouse and the table section there. And there we can see the table we just created. We're also able to download the data that we have here by using this download button and download it as CSV, JSON or XML. Another thing that we can do is highlight this query here and then we have this save as view button here. And then we can save this query as a view. And then we can write our view name here view1 underscore test and then we can click OK and that will actually create a view out of this query. 
And now we can see the view we just created here under that DBO schema and under this views folder. And from this view we can do some more queries, for example, select top 100 rows and run that query. And here is the result from that view that is actually using cross database or cross endpoint queries on the background since this data is coming from two different endpoints here. We have also a possibility to schedule this notebook by using this schedule feature here and define a schedule when we want to run this notebook. Right now I'm not going to schedule this notebook but this is something that is good to be aware of that this is a possibility that you can do here in Fabric. Also another thing that we can do is that we can create for example a data pipeline here and then we can add that notebook to a data pipeline and run that as part of our data pipeline. And that can be done by selecting the notebook activity here in the activity list and then selecting the notebook that you want to run from the list of notebooks that you have available here. This works with the regular notebooks and TSQL notebooks as well. By the time of recording this video, this TSQL notebook is still in preview and we still have some limitations with this feature here in Fabric. And one of those features is that parameter cells are not yet supported, so we cannot pass down parameters from the pipeline to notebook like we can do with the regular notebooks. Also, the recent run feature is not yet supported and the monitor URL inside the pipeline execution isn't yet supported and the snapshot feature is not yet supported and the git and deploy deployment pipeline support is not really yet there. I imagine that Microsoft is going to implement it quite soon, but before we get that I wouldn't recommend to use these TSQL notebooks in any production data pipelines as part of the solution, because this is a quite a big downside that you cannot use version control and deployment pipelines for this feature yet. Now you should have an idea how TSQL notebooks work in Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.